Good morning. It's Sunday, February the 4th. This is Ron. Welcome to Storytime. And this morning I'm reading another article from the uh, Gentleman's Journal, and it's written by Edward Davies called Just Doing Your Job. We define ourselves by our LinkedIn profiles, but the traits that really matter don't appear on one's CV. There were once three stonecutters. When asked what they did, one replied that he was making a living. The second extolled the excellence of his cutting, and the third replied that he was building a cathedral. Each view has merit depending on what it is that you value. Indeed, all work has merit. Even the least glamorous tasks can be fulfilling and important. The trash collectors of New York City may not have the most glamorous job in town, but go without them for just a few days, and you can quickly realize they are men that keep the city running. Could the same be said if the mayor took a few days off? But the value of employment is starting to become a tyranny, and it is happening to the detriment of the rest of our lives. If I were to ask you what you do or to describe yourself, the chances are you would talk about your job. Even if you don't have a job, you would probably talk about your last one or the one you wanted, and understandably so, because frankly, although that's not what I asked, that is what I'm asking. If I asked you to tell me about your achievements, it would likely be the highlights of your CV, major positions you've held, attainments and accomplishments, and again, it's what I'd expect. But if I'd asked you what really mattered most to you in your life, what you wanted your legacy to be, it may include your job, but in all likelihood, it may well not. And there's a tension here, because the values which society holds dear, which build our CVs and which come naturally to our self-image, are not the things we really value. In fact, they're often directly at odds with the traits and characteristics we really value. Some of the things I value most in people are kindness and generosity. Genuinely humble people often stay with me far longer than those you meet with great power. Those are not faded talents that I strive to register on my CV and are, in fact, undermined by the self-promoting and polished list of my achievements that appears therein. But they are things I value in the people I meet, more so than the books they have published, the salary they earn, or the size of their workforce. The New York Times columnist David Brooks draws the distinction in his recent book, The Road to Character. He describes in detail the tension between resume CV virtues, and eulogy virtues. This distinction is fairly well fairly self-explanatory. The great things we write about ourselves in our CVs compared to how we want to be remembered when we die, it's an important book. And there's a danger that not only are we defined by our jobs, but we also define the people we meet by theirs. And in so doing, we risk uh, ignoring the virtues that we really value in ourselves and the people we meet the eulogy virtues. I have one acquaintance with who self-identifies as a pedophile to avoid the awkward silences and judgment of telling them I'm a hedge fund manager. It's a joke, I hope. But it hides a real truth. He enjoys his job and makes good money, but has come to realize that it does not necessarily define what is important to him and doesn't want others to think it does either. This reality of our careers trumping our values is well backed up by research in the area of regret. A landmark study carried out by the Northwestern University in 2011 found out that the single biggest area of regret among men was around their careers. The study's authors found what amounted to a deep sense of regret among around a third of interviewees, that their jobs simply did not reflect their inner passions and what really mattered to them. So far, so unsurprising. Nobody dies wishing they'd spent more time in the office but it also found that many of the other longest-lasting regrets centered on people and our relationships, the romances not embraced and the friendships long lost. This is the stuff we ignore, often because of our jobs. So what can be done about it? We have to work, and that work will, by its very nature, by the dominant force, be the dominant force of much of our lives. There are two options. Finally, firstly, we can simply acknowledge and make time for those eulogy virtues— if you cannot cultivate what's really important to you through your work, can you at least make sure your work does not undermine them and make time to pursue what you really value elsewhere? 
Or secondly, can you build a CV of employment that reflects what you value? That doesn't necessarily mean listing our better aspirations and personal characteristics for any potential employer, but it does mean we can start by thinking that those are what those are and whether you can steer a life that builds them rather than undermines them. And much of that is about perspective. Even the humble stonecutter can be building a cathedral. And that was uh, Just Doing Your Job by Edward Davies. And I picked it out and I liked it because it emphasizes uh, there, one of the battles that goes on in this country, in the United States, is uh, not between, uh, you know, one of the essences of the battles between um, so-called liberals and conservatives and uh, Democrats and Republicans is a culture war and in terms of values. And this particular article helps to define that uh, battle in a, fairly well. The left is always saying, trying to convince everybody and not by uh, suggesting or coming out and making a statement that we ought to uh, value certain things, but by making it sound as though these are items that we already value and, and uh, value ahead of everything else. And it's a, uh, it's a sales tactic and a, a pushy one and one with um, a lot of force behind it. And uh, their values are social. They're socialists, the left, and so they... Uh, pretend anyways that the most important characteristics, the most important things in people's lives are social. Um, where was the, some of the things I value most in people are kindness and generosity. Genuinely humble people often stay with me far longer than those you meet with great power. And what that reminded me of is that there's a lot of, uh, I'm doing a lot of switching in my life from people that are uh, that are kind and uh, generous, well, somewhat generous, uh, to more of, of people with power. Because I've realized that, all, yes, the kind and the gentle people are kind and gentle, but they cannot help me get where I want to go. Uh, there's, if you want to spend five minutes chit-chatting with, with folks, or you want to spend a half an hour or so, again, just chit-chatting, um, fine. But if you really want to get something done, if you want to buy a house, if you want to um, refinance, uh, you know, you want to come up with a, a debt consolidation, you just want to be able to get certain things in your life done. You have to look to the people that have a good CV, uh, which is a curriculum vitae, another word for, it's usually used by people that are professionals, doctors and whatnot, as opposed to a resume. Resume is usually used, uh, a term used by um, blue-collar workers and whatnot. So um, the, the doctors, the lawyers, the CPAs, those are the people that can help. You can go to your friends, the people that you, with the qualities that you supposedly value the most, that are the friendliness, the generosity, but can they uh, go ahead and set up a... Um, uh, help you set up a will? Can they help you set up a trust for your kids so that you don't have to pay a 50% uh, death tax at the end of your life? And uh, can they help you with questions about your taxes, with questions about business? Should I engage in a particular type of business? What are going to be the financial ramifications? No, they probably can't, as uh, do um, as the situation is with me and the people that I call friends that are, they're humble and they're uh, friendly, but they don't know anything. They don't know the things that I need in order uh, to make my life better. Simply having people that will smile at you and pat you on the head isn't good enough. The socialists think it is, and they think it should be, or at least they pretend so. But in reality, it's not. It's not enough. And that uh, he goes on in, in here and insists that there's a difference between eulogy values and those values that you put on your um, resume. And I suggest that that's just socialist bullshit. That the fact of the matter is that what you put on your CV is uh, more important than uh, just... Um, being, thought, you know, well, he's generous. How many times have you heard about somebody that was killed, let's say, um, shot, 
uh, you know, in a caught, caught in the crossfire of a gang war. And the people that, that are interviewed on the street by the news people uh, say, oh, he was so nice. She was so nice. And I keep thinking, that's it. That's the best you can do. And I remember one time Rush Limbaugh, he was on the radio and he was eulogizing um, William F. Buckley Jr., who had passed away. And, it, and he did this little, little eulogy. And at the end, he said, and he was nice. And I thought, you've got to be kidding. That's the best you can do. A dog gets a better send off than that. I, I certainly hope that um, if anybody at the end of my life is going to say, well, Ron was nice, I hope it's the last thing that they say. Uh, William F. Buckley, for instance, was a tremendously productive man. He had all kinds of accomplishments, not one of which was listed by Rush Limbaugh in his pathetic eulogy of uh, Mr. Buckley. Um, and uh, that's what's truly important. What is it that you're able to accomplish? What are you able to do in life? Not who is it you smile at or pat on the head. That does, at the end of the day, it, it's not memorable. Saying somebody is nice is not saying anything about them. It's not, there's no distinction there between any other person. You could say, you could say that about all kinds of people. Well, he was nice. I mean, even uh, Hitler patted his dog, had a dog and, and patted him on the head. And uh, Charles Manson, I'm sure, had uh, maybe some nice things to say about people and had his moments where he was nice. Is that the way he should be remembered? I don't think so. In any case, uh, this is the um, end of this uh, particular episode of Storytime, and tomorrow will be uh, Storytime Extra. And until then, thank you very much for joining me, and have a great day.